You will work for me. You will learn how to be kind to my friends. Your life now is here with me. Hi, I'm Rachel, you're watching The Fan Carpet, and we're here tonight ready for Paul Hyatt's directorial debut with The Seasoning House. It's meant to be an incredibly scary film, so don't get too scared. Well, I hear that you are only 19 years old. I am, yes. And you've taken on, I mean, just an incredible role, really. I was 17 when we shot it, so that was kind of quite funny. Um, just 17. Because I've literally just turned 19, so I kind of, yeah, it was really, really kind of... And is, the, is this your first film? Yes, yeah, Seasoning House was my first feature film, um, which was amazing. Like, I I never thought Paul would cast me in it. Um, so when I got the part, I was just elated. It was amazing. And what sort of drew you to the part? Really, kind of being a kind of teenage actress, you normally kind of get there were variations of the teenage girl role but um angel the character of angel was so different to anything i'd ever read because she's in such an intense circumstance and it's so different and kind of i really wanted to play her because it's unlike any character that i might ever get to play again or especially at my age and so i was desperate for it this is your directorial debut why this film it was a really interesting subject matter um my background was in creatures and prosthetics and makeup effects so everyone thought i was going to do a film with creatures or monsters I thought for me what's most in interesting is real life monsters you know um, a really good story and this seemed like an interesting subject matter to tackle not to make an exploited movie but to make an exciting movie but set in this murky world of sex trafficking and sex slavery well Victor he's the uh, he runs this he's a war criminal on the loose Balkan war criminal and um, it's he's he's a man that's always been uh, a bit of a wheeler dealer a man who can get things a man who can do things and I think he's taken that sort of little bit of business acumen that he has uh, with the fact that he is an extremely brutal man there's no doubt about that and that threat all the time of that brutality to control this house and have these girls being these young girls being shipped in from these brutalized and sacked towns around the area and putting them you know make it turn it into a sort of a very brutal brothel is what you would call it really excited to see your film I've actually yes I've seen it and uh, yeah it's uh, I'm very proud of it actually it's not an easy watch but I'm very very proud of it and uh, um, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of an extraordinary ride you play Angel's mum so what's your kind of role in terms of supporting her or, or not in in her kind of journey and struggle in the house um, I think I, I think really the purpose of this part of the story is to represent what she's come from to sort of set up um, how how really horrific where she ends up being is you know, because of having what, what she's lost, you know, her family and well without wanting to give too much away. Do you find it kind of terrifying that actually the research that was done to kind of get the film together is based on stuff that's actually going on now? Yeah, one thing that people don't realise is it's going on all over the world you know, it has been and it's, it's awful to think that these things are, are events that have happened and do continue to happen um, it's been amazing working on it because, to be honest with you, when I started, I, my knowledge wasn't particularly great on the subject. And now I feel like, of course, as an actor, you do a lot of research and you find out about these things that are going on. Um, and I hope that with the film, people will, you know, at least learn a little bit about what it's like and how awful it is. How is it working with this particular cast? Oh, great. You know, everyone was great. No, we had a fantastic time. It was a very, very intense shoot, so it was work, work, work. And we knew that. We didn't have a long time to do it. There were some very long days. It was very tiring. So everybody, you know, I mean, I'm, I tend to sort of be very focused anyway. And it was a case where everyone had to be very, very focused. And if there were any hiccups at all, they were just minor, nothing at all. Nothing to do with the cast, just maybe technical <laughs> things or something like that, where it might make the day a little longer, so people are having to stick around a little longer, maybe getting a little tireder. You just have to keep focused, stay in, stay in the zone and keep going with it. But everyone was in the zone and it was great. That's why I think we've made such a well-crafted movie. Down to Paul as well. He's done a great job. 
you find in terms of what this film does for kind of girl power or liberating women? Do you think it, it does something? Um, yeah, I think that's what really um, appealed to me was uh, you know how Paul has taken the angle of a of a young girl in a very male environment, uh, getting the better of them, you know, ultimately, and um, having her revenge and the strength of character that comes out, you know. And what would you say for people who aren't such fans of horror films? Is, is this a kind of your typical horror? Is it How terrifying is it? Absolutely not. I personally am not a major horror fan at all. And actually before this, I was, uh, I was a bit like, oh, horror film. And I read the script, and one thing I would say is that it is so far from a typical horror. You know, this is, this is a, I like to call it a war drama more than anything that obviously has horrific um, events attached to it. Um, but it tells a, a beautiful story that is really important. So I'd personally say don't turn your nose up at the, the fact that it, you, it's in the horror genre because really it's got a lot more to it than that. What does she kind of do for sort of women's empowerment or being a strong girl? It really like is that women have come up to us and gone, you know, I really love your film. It's really kind of, you go for it. And um, yeah, Angel's very tough and she doesn't give in to the circumstances around her. And I mean, some people say it's slightly unrealistic that she takes down about six burly men successfully, but um, I don't think I could do that myself. Did you train for the role? We did, yeah. We had um, we had two weeks stunt rehearsal, kind of learning how to do everything safely and kind of fighting safely because that could have been quite dangerous because the men that I fight are quite a lot bigger than me, which is quite... Did you become kind of fitter, stronger? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was really kind of, we shot for five, six weeks, kind of all day, every day filming and my stamina certainly kind of was up by the end of it. It's, it's gruesome with a point though, that's the thing, is it's not glib and that's something that I was very aware of and Paul was aware of when we first talked about the project was that it's really, it has, cannot be torture porn. It was, it, it's basically about stuff that happens and, and people have the experiences that the people actually have to go through. How did you select your cast, choose your cast? Um, well we were really lucky in finding Rosie who plays uh, Angel, our lead. We went to about 130 girls and found her in the last 10. She was amazing. She had the vulnerability, the female quality, you know, she was able to kind of have this disembodiment to her character which was important because she was emotionally numb and then she starts to awaken her feelings again so and also be a survivor and a fighter and Rosie was amazing that she had all these qualities and she looked brilliant and she was her physicality to be in the walls was amazing Sean Pertwee I always had in mind as you know uh, Goran and Kevin Howarth was a kind of snake like but charming brothel keeper and you were never quite sure of his relationship with with Angel, did he like her, did he not like her? I watched have interesting characters that you never were quite sure where you are. They weren't one dimensional baddies. You were like, is this guy nice? My feeling is that they were bad guys. They were bad guys made by the effects of war. They were good guys turned bad by war.